in one of my previous videos, I talked about why people are leaving Notion. Uh, and in another one, I talked about how I tried to replace Notion with Obsidian. And it was while I was trying to replace Notion with Obsidian that I heard about any type. I signed up for the early access and got alpha access to the product. I, I've played around with it for a while now, and I think um, I'm ready to show you how any type works. Hello, welcome to the channel. My name is Mushakwe. Uh, on this channel, I share things I discovered in my search for stress-free, productive, and financially free life. If you're in things like that, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you. Let's get into the video. First of all, today's video is about any type. Uh, as you can see, the screen is open to any type of IO and it is a stereotype. And we're just going to talk about like what any type is. Frankly, I prefer the founder's um, um, definition of any type. To the founders, any type is an operating environment for the new internet. Um, any type is it's a, it's a set of tools to build and explore the new internet for private nodes and decentralized communities. So any type, any type is designed to protect your privacy. It's an op open organization that is collectively owned by its, its creators and everyone will be able to contribute and be rewarded. Tools for thought and freedom and trust. This is how the any type uh, dashboard looks. I will show you how mine looks later on, but this is just like an overview so you can see. Another wonderful thing about any type is that it has a graph view, but it's not like obsidian graph view. And it's a little bit different, but it's just, I really kind of like it a lot better than obsidian's graph view because you can see some stuff there that you cannot see on um, on obsidian's graph. There were a couple of laws that, was in, that were introduced to us. For example, number one is object. So one wonderful thing about any type is that it's not like on Notion where there are blocks and stuff like that. In Notion, everything, every anything in Notion is an object. A human is an object. Um, a, a, the author of a book is an object. The book itself is an object. And we can create different object types. I wouldn't want to get into that. And all the objects in any type are connected in the knowledge graph. Relations now. Relations are the connections between objects. They're like properties in Notion, but not entirely like properties in Notion. Like if you look at the Notion database, there's something like properties there. If you've not used Notion, I don't know how to explain this. But um, it's kind of like a linking between objects where, two, okay, let's say there are two books. The two books are different objects, but between the two books, the, the, the relation they have is that they're in the same category of, okay, the, they're in the same category of creative writing. So that's one, one way to understand relations that's, this is the, the third law of um, any type. Set a collection of objects uh, sharing certain relations. I will show you an example of a set right now. This is a set. A set can look. Okay, this is this is gallery mode. There's there's different types of views for set. Uh, view you can you can use the grid mode. This is like looks like um, Notion database view, and then there is list view, like this. Frankly, I prefer the grid gallery view. So that's how sets look like. There is an inbox set, which is all set that contains all the set, everything in all the set you have ever created. Um, then you can add photos and files and bookmarks. And let me show you how that would work. Okay, let me let me create like a brand new object type. This is my default object type is a page. So let's just say. Okay, so this is my default object type. Let me show you how you can have photos. You can have pretty much anything in uh, any type. You can add text titles, just kind of like Notion, but just a little bit better for me. At least that's what I think. <laughs> but then I have shiny object syndrome, so don't take that seriously. Checkbox. Uh, the only thing that one thing I was like really unhappy about is that the toggle. There's no like toggle headings like toggle heading one, toggle heading two. That those stuff are in Notion, but since you can color your toggles i have found a way to make that work without the edits then you can upload file pictures videos audio pdf bookmark code snippet latex uh whatever 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 all of this you can also put like objects and that's pretty much it so one other thing is there is a free thinking to a node now another special another thing that makes any type special to me is that your information is not accessible to anyone other than yourself. You have a keychain phrase, and that keychain phrase is only with you. There is nobody else. Nobody else has any. Uh, nobody else has 
this is nobody else have um this is the recovery phase nobody else has access to this recovery phase other than yourself but if you lose it that's that's all because you, no one can recover it for you but while obsidian can can store your data like on a server somewhere they are storing it in a backup node i don't exactly know the details of how this works because i'm not in the tech niche but i'm sure other people understand it but once this stuff is like synced from here you're in your backup node your stuff is being stored somewhere but no one else other than you has access to it because you're the only one that has your keychain freeze only you can access the data on your backup node with your keychain freeze nobody else not even anybody in any type can access it so that's one thing to know and um you can also um uh, create a pin code for your notion uh i mean for your any type sorry oh my god i'm so used to notion right you also import stuff from notion as you can see this this is another way where you can import stuff from notion but i didn't use that because i've heard that it's kind of wonky and i don't want it to like disturb my setup you can use different view types. I already showed you different, the different view types. And oh, you can also create a dashboard in um, any type. For example, this is my dashboard. The object here is Mushukre. That's me. And I am a human object type. And this is my dashboard. Um, let me show you a much more extensive dashboard that I spent time. I just really started getting into importing my data to any type because I decided that rather than using Obsidian and Notion together, I'd rather use um, any type alone. Uh, it seems like a much better option for me. So you can see you can create a dashboard anyhow you want, and it can be as simple as this or much more complicated than this. It doesn't matter. Uh, just do it. The, just do it the best way for yourself. Um, you can also create a leading, leading list. I already showed you that you can create goals. Goals, you can write down your goals in any type with this, something like this task uh, tracker. Okay, I, I haven't used, I don't plan to use um, any type for goals or task tracking because I have um, to do this for that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change that. Okay, let's talk about the pros of using any type. Mm, there are kind of a lot of pros. For one is the aesthetics, like it looks really good. You can change up anything, you can change colors, you can add pictures, you can do pretty much anything with any type. Um, another thing is the graph view. Let me show you the graph view. This is the graph view that came with the this is the graph view that came with with any type. That's kind of like an introduction of how everything works. I prefer I would actually prefer if they had not put it here because it just I'll have to spend time deleting all of this now. <laughs> and that would be very annoying actually when I get to it. I'm not yet there. I'm still bringing up stuff from Obsidian to any type. So, um, oh, and another thing that one other pro that I really think is a big pro was the onboarding experience with them. Because um, before you get into the alpha, you have to go for like an hour's meeting with the founders of um, any type. It, I mean, that's just for the alpha though. You can sign up for beta and get it when it's out. But for someone like me, we wanted to use the alpha and try it out to see if it was going to work for me. Yes, it was a good idea. Um, the opening experience was actually pretty nice. Um, we spoke to the, um, to the founders and they answered questions. They answered all our questions, uh, pretty much most of our questions, and gave us a support um, email to email if we have any questions. I, I think I'll still do that because I have a, a few cons I, I really can't live without, like, of course, I'm sure if you have watched, you have watched my Obsidian, um, uh, why I did like Obsidian video, you would know that um, I always want um, my apps to be minimizable, something like this, to, to be as minimizable as this, something like this, to be as small as this, but with this any type, you can't get, it can't get smaller than this. Sorry, let me, let me get this. It can't get smaller than this at all. It can only get bigger. So I, I think they still need to work on getting that possible because I don't know why I have to. Like if I want to type something out, I can't even work with this. But I will definitely email someone. I don't know if it's going to be possible for them to fix that. But they've been bringing up a lot of features. So I hope they could just consider me. <laughs> they can just consider me. Anyway, um, another wonderful pro about um, any type is, is that it will be open source after the public release. That is. Other uh, programmers can program stuff into any type and share it to the general public um, after it's released when it's be open source. It's kind of like WordPress where people can create plugins and Obsidian too where people can create plugins. 
like the community could become very very like powerful and people can add up stuff to any type i look forward to that because i'm sure there will be people bringing up stuff that i want and then but so far i've been using Inter for a while now and i really like it i mean as far as i i took a break from it because i was really unhappy like i was having issues like consolidating notion and how notion works with how any type works but when i took some time to think about it i kind of understood how any type and its objects work and now it's been easier for me to to um set stuff up or i think i might even do a video where i show you how i set up maybe my youtube dashboard in any type so you can see how that will work so with the open source public release um other independent developers can build anything that's missing and improve any type's capabilities. Your info is private every time and anytime with any type. It's not like Notion where there's like people talking about privacy policies and how some of our information is also private. Any type is completely private and you still get that advantage of like a sync, your sync data, your data is offline. Whether you're, you're any type, whether you're, you're connected to the internet or not, your any type will still work the way it works. And maybe when you come back online, it will sync back, but that doesn't matter because the your data is actually stored offline then online so that's if that's an issue like for you as it was for me and then i think that's so there's no storage or upload limits for storing stuff on any type you can upload anything to any type even videos are long as long as you know that you can handle that you can upload to any type um um i'm not really sure about the like the context of this but um they plan to have a premium uh, a premium version of any type it's not really a premium version because i think they are kind of going for free then for some additional features you're going to have to pay but that does not include the backup note and the syncing between your mobile phone and your pc or your desktop so i think that we're all safe there on that consider. um so but it's essentially going to be like free for regular users like me and you who just use oxygen for like uh, regular day-to-day -day stuff or just a uh, small small uh small business or something like that sure. um with obsidian i mean with any type you can work offline or this said you can import from notion but mm, i've gone to the forum and seen people talking about how it can get a little bit wonky uh the import to from notion to uh, to any type and i think the problem the reason why this is is because any type is fundamentally different from notion as you can see if you saw my graph the graph here you see that every page you create is kind of like obsidian but every every page you create is just going to be like something on the graph here it doesn't matter where you put, where you put it, it's going to be on the graph here. so you can't just just import stuff from notion the way you casually the way you design notion you have to think put some thought into it when you want to import notion to obsidian um i i think personally for for me i think um any type is like the best for me between obsidian and notion put together because i i really liked obsidian and i kind of still like it but when i had the opportunity to use this better option i think i'll just stick to any type now rather than obsidian and notion and i hope that this time i will have to move again and then that could just be like my new internet open environment internet i can't remember what that is okay the con of um any type um any type is still in alpha it's still in alpha but it will soon get um it will soon go to better that is that everyone or most people can have access to it and there's still a few cons but i think with these august updates they did recently things are just a little bit better for me because when i was using it before this update they did i was having a lot of issues especially when creating sets but they've kind of fixed all those bugs so for now i'm enjoying it really good um okay for me, having to wait the one hour for the one hour onboarding session for an entire week stopped. But um, I can't understand why they needed to do the onboarding because many people who have used Notion and Obsidian will come into, or let's not say Obsidian, many people who have used Notion will come into this thinking it will just be like an alternative uh, to Notion and similar to Notion because it's kind of, it looks, it looks aesthetically similar to Notion, but the entire concept is different because of the objects and everything. So there's, I think that the onboarding was necessary for that reason. Um, another con to any type is that if you forget your keychain phrase, you've lost access to, access to your any type data. So store it like you store your crypto seed phrase. <laughs> I just I just need to remind you that or just do something like create a note and copy it and put that note on your Google Drive if that's how you work or write it down on, on a paper. You have it somewhere you put your passwords, right? Because you don't want your passwords to get lost. So that's a good place to put the seed phrase. I mean the keychain phrase, right? I keep using seed phrase because I crypto. Um so that's pretty much all for this video. I hope it was educative and you liked it. And if you want me to put up the video up
I'm going to put up a video on creating a dashboard, um, and any type dashboard from scratch, from scratch, sorry, <laughs> from scratch, you can just do it in the comments. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye.